Almost. I still can't do it. I can't. Uh, I can't. Okay, so if you made it through my cheesy and terrible intro, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cameras, mainly uh, what are some of the things you need to be aware of when you try to buy a camera, because for me, someone take a lot of pictures, or for you, if you do take a lot of pictures, I'm sure some of your friends have asked you what at some point. Um, I want to start taking pictures. Finally, you're getting out of that phone, smartphone, um, photography, there's nothing wrong with that. Smartphone photography, dude, it got it can take some nice pictures. But if you do decide to step up your game, get a DSLR, you might have a question. It's like, I don't know what camera to get. I don't know what brand, what differences between a DSLR, full frame, mirrorless, crop, whatever all these technical terms is. So today we're going to be talking about what is a DSLR, what is a mirrorless, full frame versus crop sensor, and also image. Uh, format raw versus JPEG. Fun fact: If you don't know what JPEG, I don't know if it's fun fact, but if you don't know what JPEG stands for. JPEG stands for Joint Photography Expert Group. Now you know. I don't know why I know that. I watched a Peter McKinnon video. I didn't know that until then. But the big question is: What camera do I get? Do I need a expensive camera to take pictures? And straight up, the answer is no. If you, some of you might have heard this, if you've never heard it, uh, you're hearing this for the first time, it's basically, you don't need uh, expensive gears or you don't need really good gears um, to take good pictures. Like I mentioned earlier, you can use your phone, like smartphone cameras have gotten so much better over the time. The newer iPhone, new Pixels, even the new Samsungs, um, even the new OnePlus 8 Pro's camera has gone into a flagship quality and you can start with that. You basically, the cameras now is what the point and shoes back in the days, and please don't get a point and shoe nowadays. Just, if you're gonna get a point and shoe, just use, it, just use your phone. But if you are looking to get a camera, then you might be wondering, the first thing you might be wondering is, what is a DSLR and what is a mirrorless? Now DSLR, you probably heard of them more maybe, it's the most traditional form of camera that everyone uses for like sport photography, wedding photography, basically any photographer you know they, they have started with the DSLR most likely. Um, DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. It is one of those big chunky cameras. Um, they're obviously smaller cameras depending on the price for it. If you're going a little bit more towards a sub 500 category, then the DSLR will be smaller. Basically how a DSLR works is it has a mirror uh, in the camera that reflects the light upwards into another mirror and then go towards your viewfinder basically. And that's your optical viewfinder. That's what you use to look through the camera and take the picture. When you click that shutter, the lens or the mirror flips upward and then the light will hit the sensor directly to produce an image. Actually, let me show you. So this, this is the DSLR. This is the Canon 7D. If we take it off, you see in here, actually you can see my face in here. <laughs> so that is the mirror. That's basically what is reflecting up to the, the optical viewfinder over here, that's blocking over here. And if you click that shutter, let me turn it on first. If you click that shutter, it flips. The camera flips upward and then that takes a picture. And then, I mean, that's pretty much how you take a picture on the DSLR. Now a mirrorless camera, basically it is literally what the name suggests. It doesn't have that mirror that's in the middle of the camera. It doesn't have that factor that makes the camera so much more thicker, so much more wider. Um, it, the light hits straight onto the sensor, straight onto your sensor, whether it's a full frame or a crop sensor. It shoots it straight on, it displays the image. Whenever you click the shutter, it takes a picture right away. However, even though the sensor hits or the light hits the sensor right away, mirrorless cameras tend to be slower than DSLR. So a pro for DSLR cameras, if you're taking uh, high speed action images like sports or race cars, you tend to want to get a DSLR because DSLR just shoots picture so much more faster than a mirrorless. However, with recent years, recent technology improvement, mirrorless camera have been catching up. Now, what should you get? Should you get a mirrorless or a DSLR for first camera? Normally, I would recommend um, a mirrorless because mirrorless just seems like it's, it's so much more lighter, so much more easier to carry. Uh, whenever I go, I use my camera mostly to take uh, landscape pictures. I go hiking, I, I bring my camera and carrying my 7D around 
uh, for the past, I would say seven years I've been using it, um, has just been a hassle. It's a really heavy camera. It's a great camera, but it's heavy. When I got the RP, um, one of the biggest thing I realized is how much more portable it is, how much more easy it is to carry around. You can literally toss it in your backpack, make sure it's well protected. It's just easier to carry. It's not much strain your back if you're putting your backpack or your hand if you're just taking it around. However, keep in mind, a mirrorless camera sacrifices in your battery life because of that electronic viewfinder, because of that electronic uh, display for the live view. It drains a lot of battery from your camera, so mirrorless cameras tend to have a shorter battery compared to a DSLR, which uses optical, so it gives it um, a longer battery life, but DSLR is a little, just a little bit too heavy. Now the next thing you may be wondering is, should you get a full frame or a crop sensor or what the heck is a full frame even? Why are people making such a big deal about getting a full frame camera in the future or just start out with a full frame camera? Basically full frame camera is a, I believe it's a standard developed in the early 1910s or the way early 20th century um, for film cameras. 35 millimeter film, that was a standard. People were crazy about developing it, making such good image quality coming out of it with those old film cameras. And that pretty much just became the standard that whenever people build a uh, professional grade camera or full frame camera, 35 millimeter became that standard. And basically what crop sensor is, is literally just taking that full frame and then cropping it down by a factor of 1.6. The disadvantage of having a crop sensor is basically your image is gonna be cropped. Your image is gonna be zoomed in more if you have a 50 millimeter, which is one of, so far is one of my favorite lenses, you're gonna have a crop factor, so 50 times 1.6, around maybe I'll say 80 millimeter, um, so you can see how much you're losing. So you, if you wanna take a picture of a subject that's closer to you, you have to take more of a step back um, compared to people who have a full frame. However, that is also an advantage because if you have a zoom, like a 70 to 200 millimeter, your 200 millimeter just became 320 millimeter. You can stand further back and still get the same exact shot than someone who's using a 200 millimeter uh, to shoot and they have to stand closer to the subject because they don't have that crop factor, they have a full frame. Now keep in mind, full frame, like the RP that I'm recording on right now, have the capability to change your sensor setting to 1.6. Uh, so I use that a lot, um, take pictures whenever my subject is too far away, if I'm using my zoom lens or telephoto lens, then I will do a 1.6 time crop and then I'll get that 320 instead of that true 200 millimeters. Now the advantage for having a full frame Obviously, if you're paying a lot more for full frame, what are the advantages for it? The advantages for full frame is you have better dynamic range. Your camera's gonna be way better at handling the low light and you're just gonna have higher image quality in general. Now the disadvantage for full frame is it's gonna be more expensive because of the, all those higher performance, higher capabilities that the camera is gonna give. You're gonna pay more for that full frame while for crop sensors, you typically find it cheaper, like the Canon Rebel series, they're pretty much all crop sensors. They're anywhere between $500 to $900, including a lens. And lenses are expensive, let me tell you, lenses are super expensive. Lenses can get super expensive. But you, compared to a full frame camera like the Canon EOS R, or the Sony Alpha 7 III or uh, Alpha 7 R4, those are camera well beyond the $2,000 price tag. and sometimes you just can't afford a $2,000 camera where you don't find a use or you don't find a need to have a $2,000 camera because it's just way too expensive. Mostly if you're looking to buy a camera as an entry level, I would obviously if you can get a full frame, the RP, um, the body itself is around I think $9.99. Um, it is the cheapest, most up-to-date full frame camera out there uh, by Canon. But crop sensors are gonna be much more affordable, although you are sacrificing dynamic range and low light performances. Personally, I like shooting at a full frame now, mainly because I have one, but because of all those higher performances, full frame um, is gonna be the way to go, especially if you're, you might get ser more serious into photography than full frame, um, then you're gonna to want to upgrade to a full frame in the future. Now the last thing, 
image format. The image format that you're probably gonna be most familiar with is called JPEG. Again, like I mentioned earlier, with that weird long name, I don't know who came up with it, but JPEG is pretty much a standard for image formatting. Any computer, any devices can recognize it. This can be recognized across platforms. But however, the downside with JPEG, even though it takes up less file size, it takes up less storage, it also compresses your image. So you lose the critical details in your shadows or in your highlights. If your image is too blown out or if your image is too dark, it's gonna be hard to go into Photoshop and bring those details back. If you drag down the highlight standard to bring out the details in the clouds or the sky, you're gonna drag out the highlight across the entire image and it's just gonna kind of ruin the image. If you try to bring out the shadows to see the details within the shadows of an image, then you're also gonna change everything around the other parts of the image, ruining it as well. Now shooting it raw, probably you've heard someone talk about it. Most professional, most people who shoot a lot of pictures, as the more they shoot, the more they learn how important RAW is. RAW is a high quality image format um, that can be pretty much recognized by most photo editing softwares and that is most suitable if you're gonna be editing pictures um, using whether it's, even if you're using a preset, using RAW can really bring out those details and the highlights and the shadows of your images. Um, if you just throw the image in Photoshop or Lightroom, then you're gonna want to shoot in RAW because in post-production, you're just gonna save a lot of details in your pictures if you shoot in RAW. Now the downside with RAW is because it's high quality, because it's an uncompressed file format, it's gonna take up a lot of storage. Maybe like the file size for one, one RAW image can be the file size for like five or 10 JPEGs sometimes. Now let's go back to the question, what camera should you get? Like what camera should I get as someone who's starting out with photography or is trying to pick up a camera? And honestly, there's no exact camera that does absolutely everything because every camera has its limitation. Like no, nothing in this world is perfect. Um, everything has a limitation, everything has their flaws. I personally prefer a Canon camera because it has better color science. Um, the color that comes out of the camera is more accurate. Also, I like the user interface a lot better. Um, I know this might trigger you, I'm not sure. But I don't. I never recommend a Nikon camera. It's just like, my friend got a Nikon camera once and like, it took me literally 10 minutes to just figure out how to set the ISO and then every single time if I want to do go in to change the ISO, I have to go to the settings, scroll through a bunch of different tabs, scroll down to find a setting that's not even called ISO, go in there and the ISO is somewhere in there. It takes a really long time to just change that one setting. If you're out in the field shooting, you're gonna want to make sure that you're taking pictures like clack, 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 clack. You're gonna want to make sure you're taking pictures fast. You don't have time to waste to go into settings and scroll through everything. Then boom, all change your ISO. By the time you do that, your subject is gonna be gone. If you're shooting, especially if you're shooting out in the city, you're shooting street photography, then people are gonna walk by. People are gonna walk, walk, walk. They don't care if you're taking, they don't care if you're like, wow, that's such a perfect shot. Let me go change my ISO first on my camera. Five minutes later, you change your ISO to the perfect settings. Your subject's gone and maybe the sun came out of the clouds and then you realize, well, my photo is now overexposed. Let me go back, click, 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 click. Let me go change my ISO. Let me go take five minutes and change my ISO again. Now, obviously there are people who still prefer Canon or sorry, there are more people who still prefer Nikon because Nikon tends to be a little bit cheaper. Um, than most of the other Canon cameras or even some of the Sony cameras. If you're looking for a mirrorless and I strongly recommend you get a mirrorless because you wanna, I guess like because it's so much more convenient to carry around and everyone nowadays have a mirrorless to like start up. It's similar to your smartphone because you are you like carrying your smartphone. It's light, it's small, it's portable. You don't wanna be carrying around something that's probably heavier than a laptop in your backpack around whether it's like hiking or anything you want something small you want something portable so the cheapest i think the best canon mirrorless i recommend is called is a canon m50 i believe they sell it for around 600 dollars on best buy um, with a kit lens so you have your lens you have a camera all you need is really uh sd card to go on and start shooting now keep in mind even though i said all these things about canon sony nikon how like there's 
user interface differences and some color science is better one color science is better than the other one user face user interface is better than the other if you already have a ton of lens from nikon sony or canon or whatever if your family has a camera already or if you just i don't know i think okay yeah you you probably need a camera to have lenses first but if you have nikon lenses go on and buy a nikon don't start a new brand and start buying new lenses for your new canon or sony camera because lenses are expensive like they're not cheap they're probably they can be more expensive than your smartphone sometimes if you buy like a good glass and smartphones are getting expensive today by the way if you have sony lenses at home get a sony if you have canon lens like i did i have a lot of canon lenses when i first uh but when i was buying my rp and i'm used to the canon user interface so i got a canon if you use the nikon user interface get a nikon if you use the sony inter interface get a sony if you want to switch if you want to switch obviously do whatever you want if you want to switch go ahead but if you already have a huge amount of investment into one brand then stick with that brand because again lenses they're just not cheap yeah so i know i talked a lot of information jam-packed into this one video but today we mostly talked about dslr versus mirrorless again i would recommend the mirrorless full frame versus crop sensor i shoot i use full frame because i had a crop sensor for a while it was time for me to get an upgrade to step into the full frame world if you're just starting i recommend just start with a crop sensor get a feel of what it's like to take take pictures go one step up from your smartphone um, and then in the future if you really like taking pictures go ahead and get a full frame and then raw and jpeg normally you want to shoot in raw again because of all those high quality the details in it and also if you're going to edit your pictures say you have photoshop or even other like some free photo editing services you want to touch around your picture a little bit you want to shoot in raw because if you're going if you're going to go through all your pictures anyways you might as well just shoot in raw. That's what I learned. Whenever I, t I do a shoot for my organization, like Epic, um, when we have an event, I realize I sh go through every single picture in Photoshop. I literally open like each and every one of them. I look at them, I pick whichever I want. And in that case, if I'm already going through each one of them, why not shoot raw? Because that way I have all the details that I want. I can easily edit some of them, change some of them if they're low light and I don't know why, but George Mason, like your lighting in your classrooms or your lighting in your meeting rooms is unbelievably bad. It's like, I don't think it's just a camera problem. Like your lighting is just terrible. But yeah, that's when I realized I might as well shoot raw. I shot all my Banff picture in JPEG and now that I'm used to editing it raw, I, I, I want to go back and reshoot my whole trip just enroll. Patrick, let's go to Banff.